I knew Eddie Murphy came to my projects when I was eight years old. We sitting there, Eddie Murphy, the biggest star in the world, because Keenan had, was working with him on Raw, and he right. had a, a deal he over at Eddie Murphy Production, right. So Eddie Murphy was in our house, and I remember he had these cow skin pants on. And, they, and every time he sat down, me and my brother Charlie would go, move. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't move for some steak tonight, Sean? And we cracking jokes, and my nephew Craig just kept punching Eddie in the stomach. And Eddie was like, hey, Keenan, come get this kid. And we snapped on Eddie all night, and God bless Eddie Murphy. God bless that man, because his pants cost more than everything in my household, <laughs> including us. <laughs> but he never struck back. He gave us autographs. You know, he said to Marlon, uh, uh, "Go be great." To Sean, "Be free." To Craig, "When you get older, I'ma punch you in your face." <laughs> I know Robert Townsend. Still like a big brother. I know Robert since I was like seven, eight years old. You know what I mean? I had legends in my household. He used to come over and play a fake, uh, a fake trumpet. He, the first time I was ever on stage, we was out in California visiting my brother Keenan. He flew us out uh, one, one winter on an airline. <laughs> he, this when he first started getting money. He had a little house in Hollywood on Fountain. And he put us on this plane. We ain't never been on a plane before. All we knew was the projects. Right. He put us on this plane, CSUN Airlines. It wasn't nothing. Nigga didn't put us on Delta. No. It wasn't American Airlines. No, he put us it. on CSUN Airlines, which is basically like Spirit's little broke ass brother. <laughs> <laughs> we get on an airplane and it takes off and the wing <laughs> catches fire. Uh oh. And then the other wing <laughs> catches fire. And we look, we ain't never been on a plane before. We looking out the window like, hey guys, look at the jets. <laughs> It's on fire. It's, no, we didn't know it was on fire. We thought that's how that it's supposed to be. We was like, this is a rocket ship. <laughs> and go, uh, everybody put a your seatbelt on. We're going to make emergency landing. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that was your first time yeah, on a plane, and that's what happened. Uh, yes. And, but we didn't know. We thought that was supposed to happen. And then we came out to California. Robert was uh, doing a set at the improv, and he was doing this character, uncle character, old man. And he bought me, Keith, me, my nephew Damien, my nephew Craig, and my brother Sean on a stage, and he did this sketch with us. And um, th that's like, those are like great memories. Like, I, I grew up on a set of uh, Robert Townsend's Partners in Crime. He would give us jobs, he would let us write sketches. I'm writing sketches at 12, 13 years old. I'm featured in a sketch. We had Easy Listening Hip Hop. You know, the, the, we, he let us be in sketches. I met John Witherspoon. John Witherspoon was playing the drunk at, in the, um, on, on, at a cowboy scene. And he was like, the, the niggas is coming. And he was running. We was like, that's a funny dude. When we get a, a show, that's going to be our father. I had a wonderful childhood. I can only do legendary things because I grew up I was raised by legends. By legendary people. Yes. Kenan's off doing this, so Kenan is having success at a very, very young age. So what was- Actually, no, not too young. Kenan was about, I think when it all started happening for Kenan- How much Ke How much older is Kenan than you? 15? 15, 15, 15 years. 15 years, so he's 67. Yeah. So when you're like, so he's 24, 25 when you- Yeah, he's about 27, 20. Okay. When he really hit, he was like 28. Okay. 30 when he did, I'm gonna get you sucker. sucker. And then when Living Color, you know, hit, he was just right off. So what were you like in high school? Got a big brother that's making, what, what, what he, but he's having not success like he had with Living Color, not the success that he has, I'm gonna get you sucker, but he's having some level of success. What were you like in school? Did you like, man, my big brother out in Hollywood, later for y'all. <laughs> I was cocky. I knew I was gonna make it. I knew I was gonna make it, like in high school especially, come high school, and I was in performing arts high school. Okay. You know, it's funny, like my, yes, I would, I, my brothers was famous by the time I got to high school, okay. right? They were doing yeah. stuff, I'm gonna get, Hollywood Shuffle came out my freshman year of high school. Oh. And I remember, cause I went to performing arts high school, and my dad, Joe Witness, he was a homophobe. He didn't want me to go to performing arts high school cause he was watching fame. Yeah, he, okay. This nigga thought I was gonna be Leroy. Like, <laughs> He didn't want me wearing tights and I don't know, car, I don't want you doing that. And my, he said, you can't go to that school. And my brother Keenan, he was about your size at the time. He said, he's gonna go to that school. Uh, he said, he's not going to audition. He said, I'm not gonna let your homophobia stop that little man's dreams. 
He's going to go to that audition. And if he gets in, he's going to go. If not, then you're going to have to answer to me. And I got into school. And that was the day I realized my dad was a bitch ass nigga. Keep the fuck shit out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I, I, I had a level of confidence. You know, I, I wouldn't say cockiness. I just knew. I knew right. what it was going to be. I knew my brothers were successful. I, Hollywood Shuffle. Then I'm going to get you sucker. I'm going to get you sucker jacket in school. Right. My friend Omar Epps used to borrow it from me. You know, I, like, I remember, like, going to college. I'm in college. I'm at Howard University. In Living Colors on the air. I'm in Living Colors, brother, at a black university. Sunday comes. Everybody, everybody. stops what they doing. We run like roaches. We ran, run to our thing. Everybody in front of the TV. And watch that TV. And then when it's done, came out right. laughing and we talk about right. it. And th those was my, so much so that the professors sometime at Howard, this is why I left. Well, it was a lot of stress. You know, they'd be teaching all these classes yeah. and be like, you know, let's talk about menstruals and buffoonery. It live in color. Is it a modern day menstrual? You gonna put this? Is it Marlin? And I'm like, you put me on blast, and I'm in school, and I'm like, then after after class, brother wanna hand me a script. Here, can you get that to Keenan for me? <laughs> oh, he's gonna try to clown you in front of the class. <laughs> then give me a script. You don't get your ass out of here. I got the role in Nutty Professor as uh, Dave Chappelle's role. Mm -hmm. And I, my character's name, I, I came, his name was Sweet, this is during the Def Jam era. I said, his name is Sweet Booger. And he had a saying, every time he crack a joke, about, you know how Sweet Booger say, you better get out of here. <laughs> and so I had this character and they thought it was hilarious. And then at the same time, we had the screening of Don't Be a Menace and it didn't do well. And then we had to write that movie. And Keenan was like, well, I was like, Keenan, I got the role. He goes, okay, well, you can do that role. And you can make Eddie's movie funny. Or you could do the work and work on Don't Be a Menace and do your movie and make your movie funny. But you can't do both. Wow. I cried. <laughs> I cried. He always had these heartbreaking things, like these things that he would show you. And it was like God talking, right? And you, <laughs> you, it's like this this, this purgatory I'm in. And I'm just like, I want to do this, but I have to do this. and. I chose to do Don't Be a Menace. Yeah, you should have. I know, you understand, to work with my idol, yes. Eddie Murphy. Yes. You understand what that meant for me. Right. I love me some Eddie Murphy. There's Richard Pryor, Damon Wayans, Eddie Murphy. Those are my three goats right there. And you can mix them up and pick one. I want to do that movie so bad. And then, years later, I get the opportunity to do Norbit. And it just said Buster Taps. And that's all I had written. Right. And once again, going back, remember Mo Money, yeah. I wrote all these jokes down. Remember, Don't Be a Menace, mm -hmm. I, we wrote the whole thing in a week. I'm a writer, sat there, bust the taps. I watched Jane Fonda, I watched Billy Blanks. I said, what would a great tap dance class be? And I wrote a whole routine of a tap dance, uh, power tap dance class. Right. And I get to set, and Brian Robbins, who now runs Paramount, he directed the door, but he was like, uh, Eddie's going to be in makeup for five hours. Uh, we gotta, we're going to shoot something. So uh, what, do you, what do you have? It says Buster Taps. What, what do you have? We, you have a, I said, uh, um, I got this little thing that I, I worked out. Can, can I try it? He said, okay. And I got the class. I said, y'all just do everything I do. Ready? And one, two, three, four. I stepped in the pool. Got to wipe it off. Power tap to tap. tap, tap. Power tap to clap. Here come the cops. They taking me to jail. And I did the class. I did a 20 minute class. They were sweating. Brian Robbins was like, hold on. This is hilarious. We're filming all this. Five hours, Brian filmed the whole class. Eddie comes out, the trailer dressed in his makeup and he gets to the screen and he goes, Eddie, we got something we wanna show you. And so he shows me my, his, the scene and I left the room. My idol's in there. You know, the dude I knew since I was yeah, eight years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. and be free. I left the room, nervous. They start the thing, and all I hear is, oh! 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 
oh! When Eddie laughs, right. he roars. Right. Oh! I look in the room and he's smacking the chair at what I'm doing. I stepped outside the room. I don't know where the east was, but I looked to the east. And I just prayed and I just thanked God that I got to make my hero laugh. Right. And being that I didn't have that opportunity before, but now given the journey that it all comes full circle that I get to make Eddie Murphy laugh. I made him laugh. We did a scene together and I said something like that. Uh, you, you know, look at your big old orange ass. Look like the, look like the great pumpkin. Make a nigga go, turn the nigga to a werewolf. Woo! Something and Eddie were, <laughs> and I made him break. I was like, that's how I knew. I was like, I'm on to something. Right. So everything is full circle. Everything happens for a reason. Everything is divinity and everything is God. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.